Okay. So I'll continue with the RISC-V introduction that Kunal started talking more about the hardware. And then I will uh, offer some industry perspective, uh, talk about design methodology, in particular designing flexible IP. And then I'll get into various uh, circuit design concepts for digital circuit design. To cover those concepts, we will use transaction level Verilog because it's a uh, very simple language um, and a very powerful language to teach uh, hardware design concepts. And we'll use the makerchip.com platform. Um, so we'll start with topics uh, like combinational logic and then get into sequential logic, then pipelines. <clears throat> For each of these topics, um, I'll teach the design concept. I'll teach you transaction level Verilog syntax. You'll get a chance to try out some labs within Makerchip um, for yourself and get familiar with uh, both the concepts and how to uh, work with those concepts in transaction level Verilog and Makerchip. Um, and then for many of these topics, I will relate the topic to uh, a real world design in uh, using RISC-V as context. Uh, so combinational logic, sequential logic, pipelines, then we'll talk about a, an understanding of when circuits in our hardware are doing something meaningful and when they're not, so that's validity. We'll talk about how pipelines interact with one another. We'll talk about design hierarchy. We'll talk about how you can elaborate um, a flexible IP into a specific uh, hardware implementation. We'll talk about how transaction level Verilog can be incorporated together with system Verilog or Verilog. We will talk about uh, sort of the nature of architectural state <clears throat> and how that's represented in transaction level Verilog. And then we'll get to the point where transaction level Verilog gets its name, talking about transactions. And this is where the design really um, takes on a higher level understanding of the machinery that you're building. And it's a concept that you can't find in other design languages. Um, and then we'll talk a little also about, um, you know, the main focus of all these talks, uh, topics is hardware design. We'll talk about how that relates to verification. And then at the end, as Kunal said, there's an opportunity for you to uh, solve a problem, submit an answer and get certified uh, for having gone through the course and learning the, uh, the topics. Uh, just to want answer one of the questions that was asked, uh, is Makerchip an open source platform? Um, it's the, the source code behind makerchip.com, a lot of the work that we do on that platform, we do open source a lot of the components. It's not 100% open source. Uh, the core of it is not open. I don't like to open up software until the software has clean interfaces and is in a state where it's ready for a community to contribute. Um, the platform, however, is freely available for open source hardware design. Um, okay, and if there are other questions that um, need to be reiterated later, there'll be a chance for that. Okay, so uh, here's an example of a RISC-V implementation. Of course, RISC-V is the instruction set architecture, uh, nothing about the hardware that's going to execute those instructions. But here's an example of a hardware implementation, a high-level block diagram of hardware that can execute those instructions. So as Kunal uh, set the context, we have uh, application software that compiles into a binary that is the hardware's responsibility to execute. So that binary will be placed in memory. The hardware is responsible for fetching instructions from memory one by one and executing them. Um, there was a question about, uh, about how the hardware, how we know the hardware is executing the right instructions. Um, so the execution of instructions is a joint responsibility uh, as one of Kunal's slides uh, represented between the system software, the operating system, and uh, the application software. So the operating system is responsible for the overall operation of the machine, and then when it comes time, 
handing off control to the user application uh, to be processed. Um, but you know, through all those uh, trillions and uh, whatever the next orders of magnitude are of instructions that get executed over the course of a few seconds, they all have to follow the right flow and be executed in the right order. Uh, you know, when one thing goes south, your machine crashes and you get a black screen or a blue screen. Um, okay, so as this block diagram shows, the way our machine is going to uh, execute an instruction one at a time is to first, um, and let me, uh, give me one second to get a mouse pointer that you guys can see. So uh, till you get that, uh, uh, Bala, does that answer your query? Or... Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, good. So we uh, start by figuring out, as we were just talking about, uh, what address in memory holds the next instruction that we need to fetch. So that's this PC calc. And we're going to fetch from that address from the instruction memory. Load that instruction into our machinery and decode it. Um, most of the instructions will have two register source operands that we need to read from a register file and then send those values to the arithmetic logic unit or execution unit to execute that instruction and produce a result, which then gets written back into the register file. We can have load instructions, and those will compute an address and load from memory, and that load will come back to write into the register file. We also can have control flow instructions, so branches. So we'll fetch an instruction from memory, uh, from the uh, uh, instruction memory, decode it as a branch, compute the branch target, and uh, that's the next address that we need to fetch. So that diagram was not a very deeply pipelined diagram. To get high performance, we're going to pipeline this logic so that we can work on multiple instructions simultaneously. So here I've added stages by adding flip-flops, which sequence the, the logic. Uh, so now we've got a separate pipeline stage for calculating the next PC, instruction fetch, then decode, uh, then register read, execute, register write. We can, uh, we can view the operation of the machine over time in what's called a waterfall diagram. And I'm sure many of you have uh, had courses where you've covered basic uh, CPU architecture, um, just making sure that everybody's on board for anybody who hasn't seen those classes, giving a quick uh, overview of how instructions and various categories of instructions and scenarios can play out as the instructions issue and execute through the pipeline. 